Good day, viewers and listeners. You are welcome to our program in times like this and to this wonderful series of My Journey. This is a production of the Chapel of the Resurrection, University of Ibadan, of course, the premier university. And this special edition of My Journey series, we have in the house a very special guest, uh, one time vice chancellor of the same premier university, in fact, the longest serving Nigerian vice chancellor in the university. Um, a member of the Chapel of the Resurrection, and of course, Niger. and the commander of the Horder of Niger, Federal Republic of Nigeria, and so many more. As you know, that in our program, we hardly introduce our guests, as this is one of the reasons they are here to tell us more about themselves. So, join me as I welcome our father, the Emeritus Professor. Ayo, Banjo, C-O-N. You're welcome to the program, Daddy. Thank you very much, Daniel. Today, as I said earlier, it's a very special series and it's going to be very loaded. Feel free to share this program on all your social media, on your WhatsApp status. Feel free to share on your Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube. You can drop your comment as you listen or later you can email us at chapel you are online at gmail.com or you can also drop comment via our Facebook Chapel of the Resurrection on Facebook and the same on our YouTube Chapel of the Resurrection. You're welcome once again. And back to our guest. We are very delighted to have you on the program. Uh, this is going to be uh, an edition we keep. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. Sir, as I said earlier, we hardly introduce our guest on this program because we believe that is why you are here. So, sir, can we know you properly, sir? Well, thank you very much, Venerable, and may I also pay my compliments for all the work that the chapel, the chapel has been doing, uh, you and your colleagues, Led by the chaplain. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, thank you. You're doing a marvelous work to keep thank us you. all spiritually alive. <laughs> thank uh, you, sir. Yeah, in spite of the problems. Well, I uh, I am 86 year, years old. Wow. And <laughs> <laughs> if I have to say something about every year or even uh, every decade, it's going to take a very long time. But the way I view my life, is that uh, I've had a protected life. I have a, mm. a fortunate life, born to a graduate father, wow. uh, and lived all my life within educational institutions. Mm. The first 10 years of my life, I, I spent at uh, St. Andrew's College, I hope, where wow. my father was the senior tutor. And and that was the beginning of everything. It's now I look back, I think it's a privilege to have lived in a place like Oyo, mm. which is uh, the most Yoruba uh, town you can think of. Mm. And so I was, it's without knowing now. it, yes, I was <laughs> absorbing some of these uh, uh, Yoruba ways of life. But uh, by the time I got to primary four, uh, my father was transferred to Lagos to be a full-time priest at, wow. at St. John's Church, a lawyer. And I continued my, my education there. I was interested to find uh, the caliber of old boys that the, <laughs> the, the school had produced, Bishop Akinele, among others. Mm. Uh, I mentioned Bishop Akinele because he was my, my mentor. He Ooh. used to visit my parents when, when, when uh, we were in Oyo, and I was completely fascinated with mm. him. Um, so uh, I then went to Christ Church Cathedral School in, in, in Lagos uh, to complete my primary, and then went to Ibobi College, where I can say that uh, my life was transformed, mm -hmm. uh, because it was at Ibobi that I, I really 
came to understand myself, what, mm. what my gifts were, uh, what my weaknesses were, uh, and so on. But uh, Igobi made a, a profound impression on me. Mm. Uh, it was one of the top schools uh, at the time. Uh, I played sports and got colors, uh, became school prefect, house captain. Uh, the leadership thing, you know, was, was inculcated in me mm. then. Then after, after that, I, I came to Ibadan and did my A-levels at uh, the Nigerian College of Arts, Science and Technology, oh. which, which was the springboard for the University of Fife. Oh. Yeah, so uh, I did my, my A-levels there and uh, applied to the University of Glasgow in Scotland and was admitted. Actually, I, I applied for, for, for uh, classics because at the Nigerian College, uh, we had a classics lecturer uh, who was teaching classics both at the university and at the Nigerian College. And I was profoundly impressed by him and asked him where, which university he had attended. Uh, and he said, Glasgow University. And I said, well, that's where I'm going to. <laughs> so so I, I went there. Uh, Glasgow University was founded in 1453. So it's one of the ancient uh, University. universities. Uh, but the, the, the very interesting thing about it is that it combined this ancient uh, color with a very modern color. Maybe the most, I mean, very many scientific uh, uh, work, very, uh, inventions and, and uh, research. Uh, what taking place there well, uh, before before me centuries before uh, those who are economists will remember the name of uh, Adam Smith the, the, the father of modern yeah. he had gone to the University of Glasgow and been a professor there uh, and that's, that's philosophers uh, Joseph Hume he, he was also there and so on so uh, it, it, the whole thing was inspiring uh, I thought, and I lived in the hall of residence uh, for all my four years because in Glasgow University, you came in with your A-levels, you did four years and came out with an MA. Wow. Yes, that's what they do. The first two years they call junior honors, and the last two years they call uh, special honors. So I, I managed to acquit myself in the place. <laughs> I, I did reasonably well and then had to think of what to do with my life, you know. Uh, my father was a teacher. My mother had been a teacher also. Had, in fact, was, she was among the first set of people to go, the, to, go to the UMC, United mm. Missionary College. Um, so naturally I thought, well, I should follow in the <laughs> family. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so I wrote to my father and I said, uh, uh, I thought I would apply to another university in, in Britain, Leeds University this time, to do a diploma in education so that I could teach. But at the same time, I was getting offers uh, from the Nigeria office in London. Uh, Nigeria was still a colony, and so the office in London was, was run by the British. and. Uh, they wanted to offer me a place on behalf of Nigeria in the diplomatic service. They were just putting together the diplomatic service. And I wrote to my father, and he said, well, come home first. Come home with you. You've been away for five years. Uh, they may post you to China or something from there, and uh, we don't know when we'll see you again. So I went to Leeds University to do my diploma in uh, in uh, education. And while I was there, the Nigeria office in London kept in touch with me. And, and they said the French government had offered to train Nigerian diplomats in French so that they would be fairly <laughs> uh, proficient in French. And they asked me whether I would like to go because they still thought I was going to go for the diplomatic service. And I said, yes, it won't do me any harm. So I went and, and learned French at the University of Busan. Uh, and 
And then when I came back to, to London, I had to tell them, look, I'm sorry, I can't, <laughs> I can't join this diplomatic uh, call. So I came back home. I taught for the first six months at the teacher training college at Abraka wow. in, the, in what was wow. then the Midwest. Yes. <laughs> and after six months, I was told to move on to Ugeli also in the same uh, Delta area. And, uh, and you know, Government College Ugeli is a very famous mm -hmm. boys' school, produced many eminent Nigerians. So I was there when the country decided to create the uh, Bendel State. Mm -hmm. And there were, in the in uh, Government College Ugeli, there were three or four of us Yoruba education officers. And we were told to get ready to leave the, the region because we didn't belong. So um, we were found places in the core west, uh, two of us, chief, uh, late, late chief, uh, uh, what am I doing with his name? Anyway, two of us were posted to the government college uh, and that was in 1962, thereabouts. Um, then, of course, I, I, I omitted to say that I met, I met someone who was to be my future wife while I was in Britain. Wow. Uh, so, so she came back about 1963 when I had, 1962 when I was already in Ibadan teaching at the government college. So in 1963 we got married in Ibadan you know, here. Then the following year the British Council offered me a uh, scholarship the British Council and the State Department in America were collaborating to train people. Mm -hmm. And I was nominated and I, was, I got the award. So I went back to, to Leeds. Um, and my wife joined me a few months later. Uh, the program was one would do one year in Britain, in, in Leeds, financed by the British Council. And one will then go to the United States for another year to be financed by the uh, State Department. So one year at Leeds, the other year at uh, UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles. And so that's what I did. I left my I left my wife in, in, in Leeds because she was expecting our first child, and I went alone to uh, to, to Los Angeles and uh, did a, a master's degree in, in linguistics. Uh, and, uh, and then one of the many breaks that, that I've had in my life, for which I'm extremely grateful, uh, while I was completing my course at Los Angeles, I suddenly got an invitation from the University of Ibadan <laughs> to say that they were going to start a uh, language emphasis in the Department of English. Would I be interested? And I said, just like that, from the University of Ibadan. So I wrote back very quickly and said, yes, I'm very interested. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, um, the, the head of department then, Desmond Maxwell, then wrote back and said, well, I'm very pleased that you've accepted to come to us. Now, when you are going back to Nigeria uh, and you are passing through London, let's have a meeting. So I said, all right. So I got to London. He said, let's meet at Waterloo Station, in one of the one of the lounges there, so to speak. Uh, so we got together. He talked with me, uh, and he said, okay. When you get to Ibadan, go to the university, and they will give you your letter of appointment. I don't think many people are as fortunate as that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, so I got back to Ibadan, although the government of uh, Western Nigeria was putting up a fight. Mm. This is our man, you can't, you can't pinch him, so to speak. Uh, but I said, well, if he came to that, I would resign. So I resigned my position as education officer mm. uh, to, to, to be appointed here 
as a lecturer. And the government then changed its mind later on and, just, and said, okay, you can withdraw your resignation. We give you a transfer to the University of Ibadan. So that's how I came and I settled. That was 1966. And uh, I settled down with my, with my family. And as I said, I've had many breaks. Uh, I became, well, I finished off my PhD here. My supervisor was a very distinguished uh, man, originally born in, in, the, in Britain, but uh, became famous in America. Uh, and the, the university managed to get him to be the head of this small group they were, that the English department was starting. Uh, and so he supervised me. And, uh, and then gradually I climbed the step. I, I, I think I'm one of those people at the university who did not miss a single step. <laughs> I became uh, a senior lecturer. I became reader before I became professor. Uh, and I became sub-dean. Actually, I was sub-dean to Professor Bangushe. And uh, then I became dean myself. I became chairman of the committee of deans. And later on, I was to become the chairman of the committee of vice chancellors of uh, Nigerian universities. So I've, I, this way, I, I, I've had a, had a very fortunate life. Um, and of course, I, I retired. There, there were battles in the way. If you've read my book, you you, you read all about them. Um, <laughs> but I clearly I was able to finish my course, uh, and I, I retired. Uh, and uh, the department wanted me to to, to stay on as as. Uh, a special member of staff uh, and to continue on a year-to-year -year basis but I, I didn't think that was right and so they said okay we'll make you uh, uh, an emeritus professor that's how I became an uh, emeritus and I agreed that I would still keep <coughs> keep in touch with the department help with uh, supervisor I was still supervising PhD students and uh, the atmosphere of the department you know I mean I didn't. I, I couldn't just take myself away from it. Uh, so it became generally known that every Wednesday I was around, and, and colleagues came and we had a chat. Students who, uh, who thought I could help them came, and I've maintained that tradition until COVID-19 interrupted. <laughs> <coughs> so that then, of course. Uh, I've been fortunate also to be made a, a, chance, a, pro, a pro chancellor, first at uh, the University of Port Harcourt, then at the University of Illinois, and finally at Ajay Krada University. So you can say that I've tasted a bit of, uh, of university life um, in the course of my career, and I'm extremely grateful for that. I've met very wonderful people, you know, made, made very good friends. And uh, I'm, I'm completely uh, grateful to God for for what He has uh, done for me. You know, and, uh, you, you, uh, if you were at the launch of my last latest book, which was uh, uh, Morning by Morning, yes. that exactly was my feeling. Uh, new masses turned up for me uh, as I as I went along and. I'm extremely grateful, and as I said in that book, uh, I believe that God, that my life is like a, it's like a dramatic production. Uh, the plot was provided by, by God, and the the people who then took part in developing this plot and, and so on, who are first my parents, then. My teachers, I don't forget them, they're all wonderful teachers, uh, and, and so on, and friends, uh, especially here in Ibadan. So I, I feel fulfilled, if one may say that. Uh, I feel happy, and 
Well, this is this this is where we are. I don't know. The future is a bit uh, uncertain. <laughs> uh, uh, we have more or less been excluded from the chapel of the resurrection <laughs> because we are too old to worship there. <laughs> but uh, as you and I have been discussing, maybe something special can be done for yes. some of us. Uh, but I've, I've, we've kept in touch as you expected us to, to do. Uh, and we are very, we're very glad, we are pleased that uh, the University of Ibadan started this. I'm sure the other chapels will have followed mm -hmm. by now, but uh, I do assure you that uh, I'm with you every Sunday morning <laughs> from 10 to 11, to 11 uh, because that's, uh, Wonderful. I've been a member of the chapel since 1966 when, mm. when, I, when I joined the staff. Wow. I'm very grateful for everything. Thank you so much. It's, it's been wonderful to listen to all the stories and um, so many opportunities which, of course, you said you've been grateful for. Um, taking from what you have shared with us, I think I'm interested in two areas. The first is the opportunity to go to school and also the the opportunity of being groomed by a godly parent. From the aspect of the education, you've been an educa educationist all through your life. And I'm sure you've seen things changing from the way it used to be while you were young, then as a student, then as a lecturer, to the position of a vice chancellor, pro chancellor, and so on. I, I think it would be good if you share with us what actually changed. Because even though I was not born in the <laughs> 60s or 70s, <laughs> but hearing from people of your age and class, when you talk about the, the journey of your education, uh, sometimes I feel cheated, like, oh, why mm. was he not born? <laughs> In those days but I'm sure that you've noticed the trend of change mm -hmm. and um, are there things that contributed to this at what point did we become what we had today well it's it's easy I mean most people spontaneously mm -hmm. would say the uh, the soldiers came and spoke to the show for Nigeria mm -hmm. that is largely true of course uh, but my own personal disappointment is that when finally the soldiers left the scene and mm. civilians replaced them, uh, they haven't done much better, I'm afraid. Uh, if anything, they, they, they saw themselves as uh, soldiers in uh, civilian clothes. Mm. Um, so that, 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 that spoiled uh, everything. Politics and all kinds of divisions. Political division is only one. Ethnic and even religious uh, mm. distinctions, you know, came into it. I had a brush with the religious uh, conflict when I was vice chancellor. Yeah, uh, and that, that's 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 no not good for the country. Mm. Uh, when I went, as you were saying, when I went, even in primary school, you saw the teachers, and you you wished you would be a teacher yourself. Wow. I mean. Uh, primary three, primary four in, in Araloya in, in, in Lagos, my class teacher came fully dressed in a suit every every morning. Mm -hmm. And he would put his uh, jacket around the back of his chair. Mm -hmm. uh, and when, if, when necessary, he would roll up his sleeves. But he came decently mm -hmm. presented. Same thing when I went to the uh, to, uh, cathedral school. All my teachers were properly presented. Uh, then, of course, in Ibudi, you know, which is a kind of idealistic place, mm -hmm. uh, founded by the the, uh, the the Anglicans and the Methodists. So you see, I've been, uh, been I've been, been, been a, I've been a product <laughs> of of Anglican and Methodist uh, upbringing. I mean, mm. fact, mm. my father came from a strong uh, Anglican uh, background in Ijebubo, and uh, my mother 
came from a strong Methodist background in Ibadan here. Uh, so, uh, uh, I've been an Anglo Methodist all my life, yes. So, uh, that's how it is. Now, I, I slowly, slowly, the stature of the teacher mm. went down. Of course, that you, people may say that's an economic reason for this. If you, in a rush, establish many schools, hmm. then you have to you have to overlook the the, the aspect of paying the teachers a good salary, and if you don't pay them good salaries, uh, they lose worth in the eyes of the of the population. So that teachers are now no longer well regarded. Mm. I think Shoyinka captured the the old times in uh, in one of his of his place, uh, in which he made uh, the chief of the village, the bale of the village, and the teacher of the village uh, vie for the love of the most beautiful uh, <laughs> woman in, in the place. Yeah, I mean, these days, what teacher <laughs> would compete with a... With a yeah, with, yes, so, but that was it, you know, the, the, mm. the, the bale was the head of the, of the civilian, the traditional, the, the teacher was the head of the new, the new culture coming mm. along, you know, and, and being sponsored by, by teachers. And because we don't take care of them, everything has been collapsing. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I, I see as the, as the thing, you know, lack of planning. Uh, my own school at Ibobi, I mean, some of us wept because they saw this was a very good uh, college, well laid out and everything. And I, I will refrain from naming the politician. They came and created four secondary schools. On, on the premises. I mean, how, how do you do a thing like that? Uh, I know we were in a hurry, but I mean, the thing could have been a little more intelligently uh, done. So that, that, that's, that's what has come now. You know, I mean, I, I saw some of my father's uh, friends, uh, some of perhaps even of his own classmates when he was a student at, at uh, St. Andrew's College, if they wrote the English language for you mm. or spoke it, I think now at this point that they did much better than the majority of graduates mm. uh, are doing today. Uh, and uh, well, we've had a we had we've had a head of uh, service in Oyo State who was a, the product of uh, great two teachers. Yes, uh, yes. And, and I mean. Well, let me not judge whether he did much, much better than some of the graduates who are now, now doing it. So we pay lip service to education. Look at our own university here. When I came, we were at the one extreme end of the pendulum. Mm -hmm. Most of the staff were expatriate. They came from Britain, they came from New Zealand, they came from all over. And those of us who are here were a small minority, which was not good. I mean, we were, University of Ibadan should be University of Ibadan. But we are, we've now swung to the other end of the pendulum. And in my department today, there is not one single expatriate. In the whole faculty, I don't know whether there are more than five. And there are other departments which, uh, which also cannot boast of, of that kind of thing. But at the very beginning, uh, the Department of History, for example, was in the forefront of uh, studies in, uh, in African history, the, what they call the new historiography. Uh, in the Department of English, we started working uh, on, first of all, on African literature, and then on the, the impact of the English language on the on the Nigerian scene. Uh, in linguistics, you have the scholarly study of uh, of Nigerian languages, and so on. On weekly seminars, 
uh, I went to linguistic seminars and you know everything was that was a fervor you know uh, everywhere now the, 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 the it's what I'm saying about being in too too great a hurry in the 1970s suddenly seven universities were announced uh, in the 1980s another seven universities and gradually Ibadan University itself was uh, <laughs> was being gradually neglected, let me say, by the uh, by the federal government because whereas the number of universities was increasing, the vote to tertiary education was not was not keeping pace. So that's where everything started going down. And people now say, you you find a graduate speaking English and. and wonder uh, what had happened. The other factor, I suppose, was the, the factor of nationalism. Mm -hmm. you know, people would tell you, ah, English, English your mother tongue. Why are you so fussy about it? <laughs> well, <laughs> well uh, what I say usually in reply is that uh, the average Nigerian graduate started learning English in primary school. Mm. Maybe he learned it, even if he just started learning it seriously in his second or third year. Let's say he learned it for four years in primary schools. He learned it for five or six years in secondary school before coming. I think that's long enough time yes. to, uh, to master. You know, nobody wants to speak like an Englishman. Mm. Uh, but that's enough time there to be able to, to, to use the language properly, especially in view of the fact that you have no other language to use mm. uh, in most of these situations. So uh, we, have a, 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 we have a huge task in front of us as far as education is concerned. And what seems to be happening now is that uh, uh, institutions which are privately established are doing much better than the government. If you want good education in primary schools, you go to one of those uh, Corona schools, which uh, which Convit has given a bad name now. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I wonder whether they still keep the Corona schools in Lagos. Uh, if you want a good uh, secondary education, we know where they are, the private. And now private universities are overtaking mm. public uh, universities. Uh, which is not a bad thing because most universities in the world actually are privately run, not run by the government. So uh, the, 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 those who run these universities know what they are doing. Uh, if they don't produce good stuff, they, they will lose all their investment. So th that, that is the thing. So nationalism uh, and the feeling that, uh, you know, you are a, a lover of European culture at the expense of yours, which, which is not necessarily true. Because uh, you can go back to history, the English language in, in England, in, at Oxford or Cambridge or you know, a place like that, uh, was originally, the, the study of it was sponsored by people who had learned Latin. Uh, and uh, who then felt, okay, all right, Latin, in, in that case, was even a dead language, as they said. But they said, why can't we bring our own language uh, up to that extent, mm -hmm. to the extent that English is now lang <laughs> world language number one? Mm -hmm. And what we should be hoping for uh, in, our, in our own case is, is to develop our own languages, to, to be able to do all the things which they cannot do, which only English can do for us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we'll be able to do that. But we, we are not, you know, if you say, ah, give more money to education, the minister of uh, Greek says, ah, you, you have to produce uh, food for these people first. The minister of health says, ah, you've got to protect their health, you've got to keep them alive. And all kinds of spurious uh, arguments. Mm -hmm. Uh, came come about. Uh, would I say if you if you if you solve 
the problem of education, you are solving the problem of all these other people, you know, exactly. because ignorance causes mm. many of these other problems. Uh, but I, 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 I really don't know. We hope that the time will come when the whole country will use the, the, the very rich potentials which surround us. Uh, and so uh, that, that's what it is. People now don't have too much faith in the government doing the, the right thing. So people are helping themselves. Wow. Uh, in, if I've, I've spoken with people of your um, age, people above 70, 80, and there is one thing that is common, especially when they talk about their educational life. Most will say, oh, when I was in so-so school, I was transformed. Just as you said, Ruby College shaped you. People have spoken of that about Badra Grammar School, um, St. Andrews, King's College, and a lot. And it's bringing me also to the connection with uh, parenthood and upbringing. It seems education used to be side by side or even possibly intertwined with morals and some other good uh, <coughs> things in life. But now to be educated seems to be having difference from being literate and being uh, morally upright. Mm -hmm. What could be the cause of this? Because being educated now does not certify that the person will not be uh, something else. Mm. Well, I think it has to do with the environment. I mean, we, we, we blame young people, and rightly so, but I, st I think that in many cases young people can't help themselves. Uh, the, the atmosphere in which they are going. Look at who are the heroes. When I was growing up, we didn't have National Assembly people as, as our heroes. Mm. We didn't have even governors as our heroes. Uh, as I said before, our heroes were, were, were our teachers, you know, people who are educated. Uh, and when the University of Ibadan was opened, everybody thought, ah, heaven was being brought down to earth. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the university maintained this, uh, this position for a very long time. So the environment in which people grow up matters. Mm -hmm. It is an environment now in which you just have to make the money. You know, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter very much uh, how, how you make it. And people even say that all these problems we're having with ASU is that they are becoming more and more... Uh, embroiled in the, in the in the trouble for financial success you know uh, they say look at me I've spent all my life improving my mind making contributions and so on you look at them what do they do compare our salaries you know that sort of thing uh, so some people say ah, okay the younger people say okay if you accepted that in your generation we are not accepting it. We are going to give it a fight. So, and this is really, and the church is not, I'm sorry, uh, no, okay. <laughs> the church is not helping matters. Hmm. Uh, uh, as you know yourself, and, and the chapel knows that uh, not, not all uh, churches are like the chapel of the resurrection or a number of other uh, churches. Uh, even the churches have been drawn into the rat race for for financial success. So what, what, what can we, it's the whole environment. And people talk about leadership, and when they talk about leadership, I think very often they, they are thinking of the political leadership. That is, that, that is not it. Hmm. Even in the universities, we just had a very sorry episode played out at the University of Lagos. At the University of Lagos, with you know all that sort of thing happening there, it, it, it's, it's, it frightens one, you know. But we have to do something about it. We have to 
do the cleaning up. And it's not that I have a, I have a solution as I'm sitting down here, you know, <laughs> uh, to, to prescribe because it's a very, very difficult thing. And it's, it, that's right when they say it's the problem of leadership, but it's not political leadership alone. Mm -hmm. Leadership in every sphere, in education, in, in medicine, in every, you mention people like Sir Samuel Manua in, in we venerated him when we were young and the man was was performing wonders at Adio your hospital here to the extent that it was rumored that the British government had had bought his brain it would be taken <laughs> out of his head and kept in a museum you know there are people like that who have who have established you know fame genuine fame in their lines of uh, of, of business uh, but Every, politics has come into everything now, into practically everything. And uh, now, I don't know, I don't know, they're talking about restructuring and they can't even agree what they mean by restructuring. Mm -hmm. So we will never do anything. We, we, talk, we talk a lot, of course. Ah, Nigerians talk a lot, but they do very little. Mm -hmm. I think I would like to ask this, though a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we go um, because you've been a vice chancellor at least for a very long time um, and pro chancellor and the likes. And uh, so I think uh, we uh, like to know in appointments, especially in the educational area, how can we really say? The appointment runs. Oh, I would have loved to say it directly, like at your own time, was there need for a godfather to be appointed in institution for a position, or was it just about because we've just spoken about politics coming into mm -hmm. everything, even to the church, mm -hmm. we just have to know someone, and everything is becoming. And money has, has a price tag. Mm. In your days, what were those things that were needed to be this or that, especially in the educational uh, sector? Well, maybe my experience is, is somewhat limited in this because I grew up and saw what was happening in Anglican schools mm. and so on. And I know these schools were properly run, you know, uh, they even had people from uh, from Britain mm. doing the administrative, administrative work. And so nobody gets a position that he doesn't deserve. You now these people, do, these expatriates don't know you uh, from the next person. So the, the, the things were carefully done, put the right peg in the right hole. That went on uh, for a time. Of course, this generation of expatriate uh, administrators have gone and what we have here now is a different matter but since you you talk about uh, appointments maybe I can use my own uh, experience as an example mm. to show you what has happened within 30 years or so I never applied Wow. to be vice chancellor i was never interviewed mm -hmm. to be a vice chancellor because wow. the system was different then mm. the, 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 the 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 prevailing tradition then was borrowed from britain where you don't interview people mm. for positions of vice chancellor the council where the government is now doing the right thing by saying council will appoint you see because there's no way you can make government appoint you and we won't rope in politics and, and you know political parties and so on. But before that, council was asked to find a vice chancellor for Ibadan. Let's be let's be specific specific now. Uh, and they did it by what is now referred to by searching. Yeah. You know, you, you didn't apply for it. You were searched. Mm. And what happened 
in my time, in Professor Kayo Diyodijan's time, and in, I think, one vice chancellor after that, it's the same as mine. That, and then this question of application, uh, uh, interviews, and so on. Okay. The council, I suppose, searched mm. and found about six names. And the beautiful thing was that all the six names wouldn't be from the University of Ibadan. They really searched. Wow. They looked at other universities. They, in my time, they looked at Lagos University and other places. And then the council considered a shortlist, which it made up itself, and chose the vice chancellor. Hmm. Now, I don't know whether that is superior, because when you think about democracy, yeah, this is uh, this is not good, you know. I mean, uh, and that's why everybody thought this new uh, method is better. You involve other people, you involve Senate, you involve uh, Council, and so on. But see what they've made of it. Uh, so I, I I I don't know. I was I was discussing this with uh, with the. Uh, President of the Academy of Letters only a few days ago, and he's a very eminent member of the Chapel of the Resurrection, Professor Ebukari. And I said, this searching business, that's where the whole thing started in, in, in this country. You simply searched for uh, a vice chancellor, as they do in Britain. When I left Glasgow, <laughs> the, 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 the vice chancellor of uh, Glasgow, spent altogether 25 years as vice wow. chancellor. And when he left, they chose somebody, they searched and found somebody in New Zealand and brought him. Wow. As, but, yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is what is, in America too, they will you can, you can choose a vice chancellor from Britain or somewhere. Mm -hmm. Proper searching. Now, uh, I, I think what we've gained in terms of democracy, we've now lost in terms of thoroughness mm. and uh, the creation of all sorts of cliques going surrounding the appointment of, of vice chancellors so that uh, uh, Ibadan people now say it's our turn, you know, uh, never mind, just, just put an Ibadan man there. Uh, and I, I'm told now also that uh, the Muslim community are saying ah, it's about time we we had a shot at this uh, position, uh, but these are irrelevant things. So, uh, as I was discussing uh, with my colleague a few days ago, I said maybe one way of battling th this current trend is to say, okay, have what you keep what you have as uh, gains of democracy, involve people, but. When you then say that council is searching, you must say that they must not search within that same university. They should search from elsewhere in the country. They should search from elsewhere in the world. What is wrong with having a, an outstanding scholar as a, from, from Ghana as vice chancellor of Ibadan, a Ghanaian? But Damn good scholar. This is this is what applies elsewhere in, in Europe. They look for somebody who is good, and they, they 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 don't want to just circulate the vice chancellorship among people in the. Of course, I mean it, it doesn't rule them out. If if the f best person they can find is, is somebody in the university, they will they will appoint him. But the, the whole thing is being obfuscated, shall we say? Uh, when you then say, okay, this person, or the person with this kind of background must be the vice chancellor. I don't think, and precisely because of what is happening now, I think it will go, do us a lot of good to appoint uh, vice, -chancellor, vice chancellors from, from outside Nigeria. Mm. Outstanding scholars, we'll find them, whether it's a Kenyan, or say it's a Ghanaian or, or whatever.
whatever, you know. Uh, so that uh, the idea of the university being a universal thing uh, is, is restored. Uh, and and I, I, I think maybe if we did that, uh, it might stop all the clicks that, the stories that one hears, one hopes are not correct. The way that things have degenerated in universities, one just hopes they are not entirely correct. But we must do something to stop the localization of, of universities and uh, and so this, this, in short, this is what I have to say about that. That uh, I think the manner of of choosing in the past, in my view, was superior. Even before the uh, this current uh, system came in, even the Council of University of Ibadan chose Chief Adebo, who mm. never thought for one day in any in any university, but they saw his quality, they saw everything, and they offered him uh, the vice chancellorship. And he was going to be appointed before Lambo then was appointed. Uh, and he had accepted, and uh, being a very modest man, in fact, uh, I read somewhere he was on his way from, he was serving in, uh, in the United Nations. He was on his way back to Nigeria when he said it occurred to him that he didn't have the right background for this job. He's not a scholar. Uh, the man very humble, you know. Uh, <laughs> and, and then God came to his rescue. He got a big offer of a job from the United Nations, which just suited him to the ground. So he, he gave up the UI. But we would have had Chief Adepo, hmm. you know, which means you look for, in, in UCLA, uh, shortly after I left there, they thought their problem was financial. So they went for the, for the biggest financial genius around hmm. and appointed him wow. uh, vice chancellor. So... It's, it's more it's a, of a, a managerial kind of yes, position. Yes, that's it. So we must we must be prepared. Uh, I, I would I would very just as I would be very happy to see somebody from Ibadan being appointed vice chancellor of uh, of Unsuka or Bayero or somewhere like that. You mm -hmm. know, yeah, on his own merit. But we don't have that now. Uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> strangely enough, the, the military uh, wanted to, to do it, you know. They wanted to do it by forcibly mm. imposing uh, vice chancellors from one part of the country uh, on universities in another. And I, I, I disagreed uh, with that, you know. Let the universities run themselves. You don't give them marching orders. To go and resume in uh, Shogoto. <laughs> that that that's not it. So all things have to be more carefully considered, and, uh, and it, you are right in, in in sensing that appointments these days, uh, well, shall we say, leave a little to be desired. Hmm. Uh, well, thank you, sir. Um, we'll take. This beautiful music piece, Anima Christi, which happens to be Baba's uh, favorite hymn. Um, we enjoyed that at his um, 85th birthday. At the chapel before, of the years years before that. <laughs> so it's been a, a very wonderful time listening to that song and watching him sing and also <laughs> worship with it. I think you're going to enjoy a little bit of that as you listen to us. Remember, Feel free to share this program on your social media platform. Send the link on your WhatsApp status. And at the same time, you can share your Facebook. You can get to us on YouTube. And you can send us an email, chapelui online at gmail.com. This is the 
production of the Chapel of the Resurrection University of Ibadan, Premier University, will be right back after this music break. <laughs> 